Back in 1988, a tech company called NewTac introduced Lightwave 3D to the world. But after some internal disputes, a group of key developers and artists left the company to establish Luxology, a company that later brought to life Moto, one of the most innovative 3D software in the market, which quickly earned the industry recognition and built a dedicated user base. However, all that is now a thing of the past, as it was recently announced that the software is officially discontinued. So how did that happen? And how did it go from one of the best 3D software to dying this kind of death? And what are the reasons that led the company to this decision? Before we continue, let me introduce you to a tool that can be a game changer for designers. And this is Wondershare Uniconverter. So if you have been frustrated with file sizes, formats, or compatibility issues, whether your videos are too large or every platform seems to require a different format, Uniconverter might be just the solution for you. So whether you are a photographer, a YouTuber, or just want to upload to social media, Uniconverter might be the solution you need. For the 3D artists out there, you can use Uniconverter's image enhancement feature to quickly enhance your renders, whether by contrast enhancements, sharpening, or color correction. All of them can be applied. As for the guys who need to edit multiple renders at the same time, the batch image and video enhancers can help you with that, saving you a lot of time and effort. With support of converting to and from a thousand plus formats, Uniconverter can handle everything from all types of videos and audio to online platforms and social media. So Uniconverter has it all. Plus, the batch processing feature lets you convert up to 20 files at high speed, making file management faster and easier than ever. For anyone who doesn't know, Modo is a software that is similar to what Blender or Maya are used for nowadays. Basically, it is a complete DCC that provides tools for modeling, sculpting, animation, rendering, and all the other stuff. But to be fair, even though it was still active in recent years, I feel like, in the eyes of many, it was already dead. Well, at the very least, until the start of last November, when the Foundry shared some disappointing news with the community, revealing that after two decades of 3D workflow innovation, Moto would be officially discontinued, with its final version being Moto 17.1, a release which can be considered more symbolic than anything else with only minor updates and performance optimization, and for them, the decision is part of a broader strategy that allows the Foundry to focus on its core offerings and invest in new solutions to meet the evolving needs of the media and entertainment industry. And as usual, as it is the case in the industry, studios and artists currently using Moto will continue to receive support till the end of their existing contract and they can even obtain an extended 10-year license. However, they should not expect any patches, even if future operating systems make software unusable. And they made it clear that they won't be fixing anything, and strongly encourage users to seek an alternative software like Blender, Maya, or Max. As you would expect when the software is discontinued, the explanation from the foundry, if you can even call it that, it was wrapped in a corporate jargon designed to sound professional, but ultimately say very little. So this leaves us with nothing but speculation and the need to read between the lines to figure out why this might have happened. And because of that, take this with a grain of salt. Personally, I think the main reason when a situation like this happens is that the software wasn't generating enough profits to justify its continuation. And instead of taking a risky gamble and investing serious money into it, Companies often choose to discontinue underperforming software, and after all, if it were making a decent return, it wouldn't make much sense to abandon it, unless you are Autodesk, of course. This is especially the case for a company such as the Foundry, which already has leading software such as Nuke and Katana that take priority, giving them more reasons not to invest further in something less profitable. In addition to that, the reason an investment would have been needed is that the 3D industry is filled with intense competition. Just look at 3D software out there. Blender is free, exceptional, and supported by a strong community. And there is Maya, in addition to Cinema 4D, Max, Houdini, and so on. I mean, think about it. 
Moto's popularity has dropped a lot in recent years, with many newer artists only hearing about it by name. And how would you convince someone to switch from their preferred DCC to Moto? What would they gain from it? Especially for professionals already making money with their current tools, what would they gain from the switch? I'm just asking questions here. And I think these are fair questions. Because human nature gravitates towards comfort and familiarity. Mastering a tool brings confidence and provides a sense of control which is reassuring. You see, years of relying on specific shortcuts, workflow, and user interfaces create habits that are hard to break. And starting fresh with new software often feels daunting due to the fear of losing productivity or struggling to adapt with new workflows. Except if the new software will elevate their careers or if it is established in the current space, which unfortunately isn't the case for Moto. Despite its innovative tools, such as its subdivision modeling features and a loyal small fan base, Moto struggled to expand beyond its niche audience, and it never reached the broader adoption necessary to succeed in the competitive market of 3D modeling and animation. Besides, what sets Moto apart is its modeling features and the expansion into animation and rendering caused it to lose some of its original direction. If the developers had focused on refining and perfecting its core modeling strength rather than spreading it into fields like animation, effects, and so on, it might have had a chance, at least in my view. All of this might be true, but basically, it didn't just end up in this position. And it wasn't just the natural progression of things, it was also because the foundry asked for it. And it was a long time discontinuation, and what we are seeing right now is just the effect or the aftermath. Because the only time Moto was successful was back when it was still at Luxology. It had a dedicated user base that grew in the early 2000s as Lightwave started to fade. It had a strong presence in the industry. And the founders built an amazing community with a licensing that was simple and made sense, unlike what we have seen later on. Sadly, the foundry never knew what to do with Moto, especially after acquiring it. They locked it behind a paywall and seemed to just move on, letting the product slowly decline over time, until it reached the point where it stands today. When you put it that way, it almost sounds like a parody. But sadly, it is what genuinely happened, as it is highlighted by this longtime user who pinpointed when Brad Peebler laughed, the community engagement just plummeted. They lost the second founder, Stuart Ferguson, shortly after that, and about a year ago, they lost the final founder, Alan Hastings, and many other longtime developers. By this point, the software was on life support. They terminated their modern rendering engine, stole their support for the Apple M series, and then suspended new feature development to try to address issues with not keeping the software foundation modern, and this isn't even the full list of problems they had. The rise of Blender didn't do the software any favors either, which made Moto quite irrelevant as a paid software. Of course, there are paid software that are used for modeling, such as Max, Maya, and they are excellent at what they do. But for a software that was already falling behind like Moto, it wouldn't make that much sense to buy it. Because in contrast, you can download Blender for free, which is an excellent modeling tool, especially when it is equipped with add-ons. After the announcement, I feel like the community's reaction to the news can be summed by this user, who simply said, Honestly, I'm surprised it made it this far. This comment, though short and seemingly simple, speaks volumes about the sentiment that many in the 3D community have been feeling for years now. Moto was once celebrated for its incredible tools for procedural and polygonal modeling that you could customize however you like. However, it's been a few years since the foundry started neglecting the modeling aspect of the software, and there hasn't been any substantial improvement or development in that area for a long time. So for many, it felt as though Moto had already been in the state of decline, slowly being sidelined to the point where the official announcement of Moto's discontinuation almost felt like a formality at this point. On the other side of the spectrum, many were hoping for the software to go open source, seeing it as a potential way to keep Moto alive and thriving in some form. However, it's not always simple. 
and there are lots of potential licensing and third-party issues that can arise along the way. But the good news is they are offering the software for free right now to at least experience and preserve some of the software's legacy and for you to enjoy it as long as it still works. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.